These were the world's first computers. Because at one time in history, people wanted music so badly, they gave the gift of life, musical expression to a pile of nuts, bolts, and screws, and strings, and brought it to life to do something only a human could do, create art. And it's exactly as it was produced and played at some other distant point in time. Your TV, your VCR, or whatever else is only reenacting the performance, but it's not performing it. And the sound is all around. It's not just coming out of one or two speakers. Music boxes could be considered an early uh, adaptation of computer principles because what the makers were intending to do was looking for ways to capture information and then store that information and then have the ability then to retrieve it. So you have capture, store, and retrieve. Sounds like computers, doesn't it? And that's true. And with the cylinder, which was the first form, they used the pins plucking the comb. In the original cylinder, it was a, this long metal cylinder, and they would put pins directly in the cylinder at the right place. And these pins would come around and lift up the tooth on the comb, and then as it left, the tooth would snap back, and this would produce a musical tone. The programming took place in the placement of the pins on the cylinder, and so depending on where they were and the sequence that they were placed in, that in effect represented the programming. And so as they plucked, that's what caused the music to play. Then uh, the technology advanced, so the next major development was the disc. And in that way, the programming was now onto a metal disc with projections that revolved around an axis. And so, but we're still plucking the comb, but the programming is in the disc. And these boxes play uh, generally metal round discs, or as you would like to think of them as records. And they have projections from the under surface, which as the disc turns, would pluck the teeth on the combs. The advantage of the disc was that you could interchange the discs, and one could argue each disc could represent a different program. Then it found its way into the player pianos, and so with the uh, pianos, the system was pressure vacuum. Either the pressure's on or the pressure's off. Either the vacuum is on or the vacuum is off, and behind those holes in that tracker bar are the valves, which are controlling this thing, switching on and off. And the programming could become even more sophisticated because the roll could be punched to control a number of different things happening. And as the Nickelodeon became more complicated, then the programming would have to respond to that to tell the piano what to do and when to do it. And that's binary, switching on and off, functioning much like a computer. Mm -hmm. 